Hello and welcome. This is Aceless John teaching another Android Studio tutorial. Today I'll be sharing information with you about working with your actual personal Android hardware device by plugging it through a USB cable into your computer. And I'll also be talking about using the uh, Android uh, Virtual Device Manager uh, to create a customized uh, virtual device. Start, I would like for you to uh, start this by pushing this, pushing play, then launch your emulator. You should only have the one at this point, so we can get that started and going on in the background. And just minimize this. All right, now that that's started and going, we'll just go back to that later. You will also need a USB cable and your device in order to connect it to this computer. One of the things that many of you are going to have to do is you're going to have to install the Google USB driver. Let's say, to do that, we go to the SDK Manager, Appearance and Behavior, System Settings, Android SDK, SDK Tools, and if you'll find it right here, it's not check, check, and then OK. And this will download the USB drivers, the Google USB drivers. All right, now notice this path up here. Uh, this is the SDK path uh, for your drivers. When you're installing your phone, and if it uses the Google drivers, you can find the drivers here. Okay. All right, in order to enable USB debugging, which is what we're gonna be doing with our personal cell phones, um, and right there at the top is the address developer.android.com slash tools slash device.html and I'll leave a, that link in the description below but all this material basically comes from there uh, you have to en enable the USB debugging in advance for the older versions uh, you do this in settings application and development for Android 4.0 and newer it's in settings developer options and I'm going to talk about Android 4.2 um, and how to get the developer options to work. Uh, this is actually kind of aimed at the newer Androids. Uh, so for the newer ones, the developer screen is actually hidden. And in order to make it visible, you have to go into Settings, About Phone, and tap Build Number seven times. <laughs> it actually, mine actually did a little count up on how many times I tapped it. And then we return to the previous screen, there you will find the developer option available. And in the menu there, you can choose to make it uh, go away if you want to or not uh, when you're done using it as a developer USB debugging phone. Uh, at some point, you may get a dialogue asking whether to accept an RSA key. What this basically is, is it's an added safety feature um, so to protect you, the the user of the phone uh, ensures that the USD, USB debugging and any other com ADB commands that are executed on your phone uh, will not be executed unless you're able to unlock the device and acknowledge the dialog. That way you couldn't potentially do something uh, harmful to your phone and then not be able to unlock. Um, so this is just an added layer of protection. Some other things you may be, need to be aware of uh, this is the USD bugging. Uh, you have to check that to make it uh, work. Uh, so you just click that and it says OK. Another thing is some phones, when you connect them automatically, uh, they're, they're media device MTP and you need to change that to camera PTP. Uh, but that's that, that wasn't applicable in my device. I think that might be something that you would have to worry about if you have a Samsung Galaxy. Now you need the USB cable to connect your phone to your computer. Now, if it depends on what version of OS you have with Windows 10 and the newer versions of Android, it's going to probably pretty much be all plug and play. You won't even need to use the Google USB uh, drivers. Some other people are going to have a problem because, uh, for instance, I believe the Samsung Galaxy, which is very popular, does not use uh, the USB drivers provided by Google 
and so uh, you're going to have to get there another way. You will need to go to Google, do Android OEM USB drivers, and it will take you to this page right here. <clears throat> And install and this tells you how to install USB drivers for different Windows systems and it has a list of the all the OEM drivers for all the major phones now my phone is not one of the major brands um, but mine completely plug-and-play I plugged it in play and I was ready good to go so once you've got your USB drivers all connected and your phone operating it should be as simple as going up here and I've got project structure open clicking the play button and here you go there's my phone uh, and so it should be with your phone so you just click there and then click OK and when you look at your phone it should be running and sure enough mine does As I mentioned earlier, I was going to show you how to create your own custom virtual devices. And I'm going to do that because I just started this one so you could see it, but it's the default one, the Nexus 5, and it's kind of big. Um, so it fits in the entire screen and it's kind of ginormous. So what if you wanted to use something like this, um, and a Nexus 5 default, but you wanted it to show up smaller? Huh. So what we're going to do is that's we're going to create a, a smaller version of the Nexus 5. You go in here to the manager, and I already created one, but we're going to do the whole step all over again. Create virtual device, and you can choose another one if you wish, but I'm going to choose Nexus 5 because we're familiar with the, the size of the Nexus 5. I'm going to click Clone Device because if you... You can, if you change the default values, uh, you're going to mess up your Nexus 5 phone. So you do want to clone the device, create a copy of it. And then I'm going to rename this Nex 5 Example. You can mess with any of these details you want, but I want you, for the purposes of the demonstration, to look at one particular part. So just say OK to this screen. Click Next. Uh, this is fine. OK, this looks great. Then you can change the orientation that it opens into. Uh, it's all great. You can change this. Now, this is the part that I want you to look at. Um, when I choose 2 DPI, which is theoretically DP is the actual pixels, um, which is a little bit different than DPI. but for the sake of this argument it's 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 applicable what it does is this will actually take one and turn it take two and turn it into one so it effectively reduces the size by 50 percent when I do it on my machine I get a terrible graphics glitch so I'm going to use four uh, so theoretically speaking it should reduce it uh, to maybe a fourth of the size but we're going to see it only reduces it to about half because that's the anyway there's a, there's a difference between dpi and, and px finish saving and then i'm going to go back and i'm going to run and i'm going to choose a launch emulator and i'm going to choose the one i just made the example okay and it's going to start up and you're going to see it's going to be significantly smaller. Eventually. <laughs> and if you install Jenny Motion, uh, this is not something that uh, you have to worry about. So it, it's, I don't know if it's about a fourth of the size, but it's definitely a third of the size of the original one half maybe anyway it's not quite nearly as huge so that's handy uh, if you have an issue with the screen uh, if your phone is too big 
if you want to get one of the huge um, emulation sizes to run and be appropriately looking on your screen you'll need to do this uh, so that it won't take up the whole screen you could reduce the, the the size of it and still have the ratios correct so it's a very handy tool to have um, I'm, I'm not actually going to run this uh, size when I'm doing the demonstrations. I'm going to use the actual default. So I'm going to wait, up, wait until it, it runs. It's one of the bad things about this is it, it takes forever to, to load up. With my uh, personal phone plugged in, I mean, it's, it's 10 times faster but you work with what you got and there it is our little app is running three second pause and then on over here so easy peasy I'll be teaching more about Android Studio uh, next uh, tutorial is going to be another programming uh, situation in which I show you a program and then we'll discuss it with uh, the following episodes. So this is Aceless John. Glad you could join me. And please thumbs up and subscribe.